वेलकम टू फेब्रुवरी टू थाउजेंड नाइनटीन के स्टडी एग्जामिनेशन प्री सीन मेटीरियल एनालिसिस सो इन दिस वीडियो आई विल बी लाइक एक्सप्लेनिंग द फिनेंशियल एंड रेशियो एनालिसिस फॉर द कंपनी वीटा एंड आई एम श्याम प्रसाद योर so this is an intro about myself i am sham prasad i am a member of acca and sima i am a post graduate in mba finance and i am very much interested in solving uh, case studies and i am the founder of wow academics so disclosure the entire case study as you know by sima is used as in the same form no part has been edited or added or deleted to the sima case this video is purely for educational purpose so we'll be like discussing about the profitability and liquidity ratios here so here i have calculated the profitability ratio for 2018 and 17 and i have given my comments uh, on this side so the roc of the company has actually falled from 2017 to uh, 18 so in 18 17 you can see that the roc has been 28% and it has like fallen drastically to uh, 9% so ros ROC has fallen significantly and this is due to fall in the operating profit so you can see that the denominator capital employed seems to be relatively stable but uh, the operating profit has uh, fallen substantially so we will see how uh, well the operating profit is operating profit if you see the ratio is somewhere between 4.4.28% in 2007 and 1.35% in 2018 so there has been a substantial reduction in operating profit and this reduction is actually due to the fall in increase in other operating expenses and this is actually due to r&d expenses which has which has been increased by 354 uh, million uh, n dollars so that has been that is the actual cause for uh, the reduction in operating profit the gross profit seems to be much more healthier but of course we are not worried about the gross profit because the operating profit here is substantially reduced and the roc is at a terrible position here so what about our liquidity uh, ratios liquidity ratios we don't have any peer group comparison to tell whether this numbers are like good or bad so we can use the normal ideal ratio uh, that is 2 is to 1 so if we use 2 is to 1 as an ideal ratio this ratio seems to be a little bit bad but comparatively over over the years like 2017 and 18 it's a, it seems to be like uh, relatively like uh, stable but still we need to find out each and every number within this to identify whether this is a good uh, uh, ratio position or not for example if you keenly observe uh, over 17 and 18 the cash has actually substantially reduced you have to check the balance sheet for uh, identifying this ratio so the cash position has substantially reduced but the receivable position has been like substantially increased and the payables of have also been like substantially increased so the net effect is 1.52 but still the cash element has actually become much more bad so you could also see here the quick or asset test ratio so in this ratio you might seem you it might seem that both ratios are very similar but the cash ha actually has gone down substantially and the receivable position has uh, actually substituted the cash position so even though the ratios are like uh, looking good so number 1 have any peer group comparison to make and number 2 uh, these numbers if you dig deeper they give you another kind of a bad picture about the company so quick ratio is not favorable to the company we'll move on to the next slide so here we will discuss about the turnover ratio and capital structure ratio so if you look Uh, we couldn't we are not unable to compute inventory turnover ratio receivables and the payables ratio because for inventory we need to have a cost of sales uh, cost of sales uh, uh, which i don't think is available receivables we need to have a credit sales uh, i think that's not available and for payables we need credit purchase so that's all that is also not available if you see working capital turnover ratio uh, is been like maintained at a proper rate for example it seven times the sales is there and six times sales is there so more or less they are like very same but if you see the dupont ratio so the dupont ratio is a multiplication of working capital ratio and operating ratio then which leads us to roce so if you see this 4 multiplied by 7 gives us the roe of 28 and if you see here the 7 we can round it out of to 7 
the 7 multiplied by 1.3 actually gives us somewhere around uh, somewhere nearby 9. So, what it essentially means is the ROC number here is actually driven by the efficient use of the working capital. So, that is what our ROC is. If the efficiency of working capital is going to go down, then I think uh, the ROC would actually fall much more lower. So, that is about the, the position here. So, it indicates extensive use of working capital. ROE is supported, ROC is supported by uh, working capital turnover ratio alone. So, we will move on to the next ratio which is the capital structure ratio. Capital structure ratio here we have taken the capital gearing ratio first. So, the ratio is uh, debt divided by equity uh, that is what the ratio which I have taken. So, if you take that ratio uh, more or less it is the same it indicates only 0 0.04 or uh, uh, in other words it is only 4 percent only 4 percent of debt is used when compared to the equity. So, we, ha we can have a idea saying that we have a huge uh, uh, benefit of getting more uh, debt into our company. But, uh, so that is a good thing. So, there is a good chance we could increase our debt in the company. And uh, if you look at the interest coverage ratio, actually we could not come, we cannot compute the interest coverage ratio because the interest coverage ratio is PBIT divided by interest which is paid. But, the, but if you see the uh, profit and loss statement, it actually shows you interest received. So, there is no net interest which has been paid, but we are only receiving. So, this ratio cannot be calculated. Even if we calculate it, calculated it, I think uh, we will not get any meaning here because it is interest received ratio. So, this three zeros, I only like uh, put it up here, but it is not actually zero. You cannot calculate it. Since interest outgo cannot be calculated, still we can say that beta can go for debt issue. So, both these ratios indicate that the company can go for a debt issue. We will move on to the next uh, st uh, slide. So, here we have the common size statement. The common size statement is a statement where we uh, I have applied it for the balance sheet or the SOFP where I have taken the total assets as 100 and I have computed over the years 2017 and 18 how the, how the other assets are like uh, proportionate to the total assets. So, if you could see the property, plant and equipment is only 3 percent of the total assets. Inventories is 25 percent, receivables is 69 percent and cash is only 3 percent. So, you it actually shows a very different picture. It shows actually a very bad picture where we just now said that the company is in a position to raise a, a large amount of debt, but the thing is they cannot raise debt here because they do not have any property, plant or equipment to give as collateral. They cannot give uh, receivables as collateral for getting a long term debt that is not possible and uh, getting a loan based upon inventories again it is not possible. So, uh, the company now is in a position where they are unable to get a loan. The cash position is very very bad. See, last time it was like look at this amount it was like 1,90,000. So, 1,90,691 and now it has like fallen to 51,604. So, the position is like very bad. It is like 75 uh, percent it has fallen. So, the position seems to be very bad. We will now move on to the equity and liability side. So, when compared to the total equity and liabilities, share capital is only 3.45 percent and retained earnings is 31 percent. So, if you add both together, it might come back around some 35. So, 35 percent of the entire equity and liabilities is equities. So, that is a good thing. But actually, the debt is only 1 percent of the total equity and liabilities. So, the long term debt is very, uh, very less. So, the company has a uh, has a huge uh, way, where opportunity where they can raise more debt. But the problem is this. See, this entire company is actually supported by uh, shorter term uh, payables here, shorter term liabilities which is payable. So, 63 percent of the entire liability is like funded by payables. So, if you could compare the payables and the receivables, it actually leads to another uh, different picture. So, the company is living on borrowed debt. So, the company gets uh, pays much more later to their suppliers and they use that uh, difference in capital 
that they use uh, to give receive to sell credit sales and they're just pushing the product into the market so this actually tells that uh, the company is doing a is in a very uh, sticky kind of a situation or in a dangerous situation where if the payables are going to be quickly asked within a year we, we assume that it's within a year if some if some payables is going to be like recalled in another two months or a four months then at that position the company does not have won't have much money to pay them and the company would actually be even in a position of a bankruptcy so they are in a very they are playing a very dangerous game here so it's dangerous and payables is 65 percent of total assets so this is a very key area i think when they ask a financial based question you should be able to use this information and uh, crack the answer so i here in this slide i've used r d expense and its effect on uh, uh, other uh, numbers so i have used numbers like uh, uh, profit for the year i've used uh, uh, total cash flow for the year and I've used total inflow operating active operating activities cash flow. I've used three numbers so you could see here what I've done is I've tried to use use a metric so R and D to profit. So if you take the R and D amount okay the R and D amount comes to this number divided by the profit okay so it tells us how many times of profit the company is investing in R and D. So they are using this number, okay? They are using 15 times of this number to support their R&D expense. So they are spending a huge amount of their money in R&D purpose. So that is the reason why cash has fallen, and that is the reason why our operating profit percentage has actually fallen. So that is the reason uh, the impact on the financials. So they are. This is a very bad position where they are using a lot of their money to. And investing in R and D, and of course, all the R and D is only like expensed. So in the longer run, they are not creating any intangible, but all of the expense are all all of the R and D are just expense. So I used the same thing to compare with the R and D to total cash flow. So R and D is a numerator, and total cash flow for the year is a denominator. I have arrived at five times. So in a one single year, whatever cash flow that they have generated. Five times of that cash flow they have invested in R and D. So it, we can, in another way, we can interpret it like uh, five years of their cash flow has been invested in R and D. So and that kind of, I think that also is a very bad indicator. And the last one is operating cash flow. So when compared to their operating cash flow, their operating cash flow is already negative. So we, when we use that, they are using eight times their cash flow to invest in R and D. So when you compare R and D to any other information, it only shows a very very bad picture. So, but when we compare 2008 and 2017 for these ratios, see it it's always the answer is always two. I've not even rounded it up. The examiner or the case study creator has a purposely given two as a answer. So he wants us to break this uh, numbers. So what it indicates is every in the previous year they have invested whatever they had two times of their profit they were invested in R&D two times of their cash flow they might have invested in R&D two times of their uh, uh, of their operating cash flow they have invested in R&D so every whatever they have they invested two times that itself is a risky situation and the situation the company is in now is in a very dangerous situation number one their receivables is very high payables is very very high and, and at this time if they are going to invest all their money in R&D I think that is going to be a very dangerous game so this is where the case study actually is very interesting here so we'll move on to the next slide 